Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 12.3, trigonomic functions of general angles. Now we have used these trig functions before, but we used them with right triangles. Now we are going to be using them with a given point on the terminal side of an angle. We'll be able to find these six trig functions using a little bit of Pythagorean. Now we'll call it R, we'll find that side R and using the coordinate points that they give us. And now our trig functions are listed down here where sine theta is y over r and then cosine is x over r and tangent is y over x. Now notice they flip with their opposite angle. Also, the bottom of the fraction cannot be zero. Why can it not be zero? Because what happens when you divide by zero? So if r was zero here, could we divide by zero? No. Why is that? Because you cannot divide by zero. The world would explode. So here are the functions that we will need, and this is how we find r. So what do these problems look like? Well, we have the terminal side of theta is in standard position, contains the point, 8, negative 15. This is the point that we will have to use. Find the exact value of the six trigonomic functions of theta. Ladies and gentlemen, what is our point in? It is x, then it goes y. So we know what x and y are, but we have to find our r. So let's go ahead and find our r by this guy right here. So it's going to be r equals the square root of 8 squared plus, now be very careful, that's a negative 15 squared. So when we square that, that's actually going to turn out to be positive. So it's 64 plus 225. And then I'm going to keep simplifying here right down the row. And then we come up with the square root of 289. And so now r equals 17. So we have r is 17. We know from our point x is 8 and then y is negative 15. Now I just have to use my trigonomic functions over here and plug them in. So sine is y over r. So y was a negative 15 over r which is 17. Now cosecant ladies and gentlemen is just the opposite of sine so I'm going to do cosecant at the same time. All I have to do is flip them. Well that's going to be still negative 17 now over 15. Well, if we go back here to double check our work, it's r over y. So r was 17 and then over y, which was negative 15. Now cosine is x over r. So it's 8 over 17. There is no negative because we did not use y. For secant, we just have to flip it. So it's 17 over 8. Then we have tangent. Tangent is y over x. So it's negative 15, that's going to go over 8, and then cotangent, we flip it again, keeping it negative 8 over 15, and that is negative. So there are our six trig functions. Next, we have a reference angle. A reference angle is the acute angle acute angle formed by the terminal side of an angle in the standard position of the x-axis. What does that mean? Well, if here is our angle, our reference angle would be from here to there, from this side of the coordinate plane to this terminal side of the angle. We would call that theta prime, and all that is is here is a theta with a little apostrophe right there. So let's go ahead and cover our quadrants first of all. Quadrant one is from zero degrees to 90 degrees, or in radians, that is going to be from zero to pi over two, or half pi. Quadrant two is from 90 degrees to 180 degrees. In radians, it's pi over two, two pi. Quadrant three, is from 180 degrees to 270 degrees, and for radians it's pi to 3 pi over 2, and for quadrant 4 that is 270 degrees to 360, and with radians that is 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi. Now to find our reference angles, we're going to be using what's in the red. If it's in the first quadrant, that's perfectly fine. We keep it how it is if it's in the first quadrant. If it's in the second quadrant, 
if it's degrees, we would use this guy for degrees because of the degree sign. And then we would plug our theta in here. This top one is degrees, bottom one is radians. If we were in our third quadrant, now the angle measure would go in front of the 180. We would subtract the 180 from what angle we were given. Same thing with radians, we would subtract pi. Looking in quadrant four, it changes to 360 degrees and to pi. So let's go ahead and give a couple of these a shot. Here in number two, we are given 330 degrees. Well, first we have to find out what quadrant is that in. Well, 330 degrees is between 270 and 360, so that is going to be in quadrant four. So in quadrant four, four degrees, I'm using this guy, it's going to be 360 minus 330. So it's 360 degrees minus 330, and that's going to give us 30 degrees. So the reference angle for 330 degrees is just 30 degrees. How about for number three? Now it's negative 200 degrees. Well, with negative 200 degrees, we do not have that on our quadrant. What do we have to do? We have to find our coterminal angle, right? Coterminal, coterminal angle. So how do we do that? Remember, we have to add 360 to that. We add 360 to that to come up with 160. Now we have 160 on our quadrants, and that is in quadrant 2. So now in quadrant 2 we go 180 minus 160 to get 20 degrees. So the reference angle for negative 200 degrees is 20 degrees. Now we move into radians. With radians, it's the same sort of deal. We just use radians. Uh, you can use your calculator a lot just with the fractions. Just with the fractions. Don't punch in pi. Just leave pi out of there. Worry about pi at the end. So now with 4, we have a negative 5 6 pi. Again, we do not have that on here. So how do we find our coterminal angle? We have to add 2 pi to it. So when I add 2 pi to it, I come up with... 7, 6 for my fraction, so I'm just going to tack on a pi right on top. Now, 7, 6, where is that? Well, from 0 to pi over 2, that's more than a half a pi, more than a whole pi, but it's not more than 3 pi over 2, so I am in quadrant 3. What do I have to do with this? I have to go 7 pi over 6 minus what? minus pi because I'm using radian. So I take that minus just one whole pi, or if we were typing this in our calculator, it would just be 7 sixth minus 1, and that's going to give me 1 or just a pi over 6. Looking at 5, now we have 5 pi over 3. What quadrant is that in? That's over a pi, so we're past quadrant 2. That is bigger than 3 pi over 2 because we are really close to what? We are really close to that 2 pi. So we are dealing with quadrant 4. And in quadrant 4, we are dealing with radians. So now we go 2. I'm just going to use my numbers 2 minus 5 over 3. That gives me a 1 third. Now if I wanted to tack a pi on, how would I do that? I would just tack it on on top or on the side. So it's pi over 3. 3 for our radian measure. So here, ladies and gentlemen, I did it with pi. Here I did it without, just taking the pi out and then tacking on later so you can use your calculator. Makes life a little bit simpler for you. But that's how you find a degree reference angle and a radian reference angle. That does it, ladies and gentlemen, for section 12.3, trig functions of general angles. Good day.